Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite techniques from acceptance and commitment therapy, cognitive diffusion. Most of you are probably thinking, what does that mean? I understand the two words, what do they mean when you put them together? Essentially, cognitive diffusion is a tool that allows you to take away some of the power that your thoughts have had over you. It's about how to shift from thinking a thought is our guidepost or a pressure that leads us to some behavior or in some way has to shape or affect our day, to seeing a thought as just a thought, to allowing it to take up some space and to move past us or to be present without being consuming. So the concept or the idea behind cognitive diffusion, and there are a variety of ways to go about and apply this skill, is basically to find ways to externalize ourselves or to detach ourselves from the thought and to allow it to continue to move past us, almost as if we were standing at the beach and waves were hitting us and then passing and really seeing that we don't have to control the presence of those waves or get consumed by one wave that's taking over us, but instead can just see it as a wave or as a thought and let ourselves continue in our everyday lives. Now, the reason this is incredibly important, and you've probably heard me talk about this in other videos, is the overlap between how our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors all create feedback loops and play into each other. So the more my thoughts are dictated by maybe negative self-talk, they're shame-rooted, they're taking over, I'm ruminating on these certain things and getting stuck in these narratives the more that's going to affect my feelings and my behaviors and subsequently create those feedback loops that lead to maybe more unhelpful or negative thoughts, more unpositive, I guess, or not positive feelings, or things that make us feel like our behaviors or the outcomes that end up happening don't align with what we really want to do or who we really are, but instead, again, are all just sort of stuck in this cycle of negativity and unhelpful rumination. So I'm going to walk you through the tool that I use and how I specifically apply this technique of cognitive diffusion to my everyday life to help, man help manage my stress and anxiety. Again, you can go and Google cognitive diffusion techniques and there are a variety of ways. The ultimate goal and what you want to look for is a tool that helps you separate from the anxiety or stress, pressure, whatever is sort of the narrator of that thought, and then externalizing yourself from the thought itself. So again, being able to detach from or separate from that thought so it doesn't carry with you throughout the day, but instead just moves past you. You can notice it and continue on. So as I go through this technique, I'm going to kind of break it down in each step as to why I'm doing each part of it. I'm a very visual and hands-on person, so I like walking through some sort of guided visualization that allows me to really feel like I'm making shifts and movements. But this idea of externalization really is rooted in just one of two ways, and so you can decide what works best for you externalizing ourselves or detaching ourselves from the narratives we get stuck in or the thoughts that we get stuck in can be done either through saying our thoughts out loud or writing our thoughts down. Now, saying them out loud doesn't mean you have to say them to another person. Writing them down doesn't mean you have to keep them to yourself. You can choose whether or not people are a part of that conversation with you or part of that processing, but really the key is just to get them out of your head. And the way we do that is either to vocalize them or to write them down because that takes them out of here and puts them out into the world. So again, that's really the root of what you're trying to do. The way that I go about doing this is just one platform. So what I like to do is step one, that externalizing from the anxiety or the stress. I like to think about my anxiety as being a separate entity in my brain, a different character, somebody that wants to be my friend that thinks it's being helpful, that thinks that we're really close, but in reality, I just kind of want to stop playing with them. So anxiety moved in next door about 20 years ago, 25 years ago. It comes over every single day and wants to play with me. Now, right here, as I'm going to kind of walk through this, this is that externalization, right? It's not, I'm an anxious person. I have all this stuff. It's anxiety is this separate piece that wants to spend time with me. 
Now, when I visualize my anxiety, I actually visualize this weird sort of dementor looking type lanky body in a black suit wearing a grumpy cat mask. I have no idea where that came from. I also started labeling it Harriet a long time ago. So my anxiety's name is Harriet. Harriet comes over in this weird costume and presence. And every time that they come over, they bring me a bouquet of black balloons. Now, I'm sure we've all had this before, whether it's an adult friendship, whether it's when we were kids, there have been people that have wanted to spend time with us that we don't really want to, or we maybe feel like we'd rather say no, but that sense of obligation, that self-doubt, maybe our shame stories tell us that we don't have the right to say no, we have to just invite them in, be polite, or we don't have any standing to say no thank you. Maybe they're more powerful, maybe they are they have greater value. And so when that's the case, right, somebody like anxiety gets a little bit more presence in your everyday life. So my anxiety comes over several times a day. And for a really long period of time, I would invite him in. We would spend time together. I would take these stupid black balloons. I wouldn't know what to do with them. But I told myself I didn't have the right to say no or to get rid of them. That would be rude or hurtful. So I would just hold them. I would collect these black balloons every time anxiety came over. Well, the more that I did this, the more my anxiety was there constantly and the more black balloons that I got. So step one, by just starting to externalize and see this story rather than thinking I'm anxious, my thoughts are always here, I'm shifting it to anxiety was bringing these over as a gift and a gift that I collected but maybe didn't necessarily want. They weren't coming from me, they were coming from someone or something else and I was making maybe some decisions or choices about keeping them that were in line with my own negative self-talk. So then part two was starting to think, okay, what are these stupid black balloons? What are, and each one of them in my case represented a thought. So I would start to look at them and I would notice every single balloon had a thought on it. Maybe I'm really scared about blank. I... I'm worried about money. I'm stressed that I had client cancellations this week and I'm worried about their mental health, but maybe I'm also worried about you know my own financial stability. Or maybe it's I had a really hard conversation with a client and I worry that I say, said the wrong thing. Or I'm scared I won't get into this conference I applied to, whatever the case may be. As I paused and started looking at each one of the balloons, I realized, those are literally the thoughts that are overtaking my brain. And by holding on to those, by just continually taking these black balloons, I didn't realize that anxiety was slowly dictating what my focus was on. Well, it makes sense if I have these black balloons that are all over my house or I'm holding them and they're right in front of my face, I'm not going to be able to see everything else. My perspective is going to get anchored on what's right in front of me, which is just these black balloons. So that's step two, as I start to go through this externalization or this dismantling process is to realize, wait a minute, all the things that I've been focusing on, all of those thoughts that have felt like they have so much power, were being brought over every day, multiple times a day, some days, by anxiety. And I don't like them, and I don't want them, and I yet have continued to take them because I feel like I should or I have to. So then the third part of the process is to start to think about what do I have the right to do with them and how can I honor that they were given to me without allowing them to consume me. And so in my case, what I started to notice is there were a lot of repeats that were showing up in my balloons. Anxiety was coming back multiple times a day, if not at least once a day, and bringing a lot of the same balloons every time it came. And so I realized that anxiety was never really caring about what I did with the balloons. It just kept bringing me more and more and more. And that was its sign of connection and friendship and thinking it was helping me, right, by making me focus on all of these things, but it wasn't really helping me. Now, you might not totally be ready to let go of or relinquish maybe the role of those thoughts because, again, they're so intertwined into our feelings and behaviors. They've automated brain patterns in our head that we can almost rationalize that they're helpful. 
right? Well, no, the fact that I focus on these things, that I think about these things means I care about other people, or I stay on top of everything, or if I don't feel anxious, I'm going to miss something. Whatever those stories are that collude with that belief of, no, we've got to hold on to this. This is what's safer. So what I started to do in that part three of the shift is then to say, well, if anxiety is going to bring these every day anyways, how helpful is this for me to continue to hold on to them right now? So what I started to do is I would imagine every day anxiety brings these black balloons, they gift them to me, and they think they're being helpful. I don't have to keep them just because they brought them over. They're going to bring me more. I will have new ones eventually. I can honor each one of them. I can acknowledge what they are, and I have the right to let them go. So this is part three in this kind of final stage of this diffusion process, right? I've separated from myself from anxiety. I see that my thoughts are actually being dictated by these gifts from my anxiety, and now I'm making a decision to honor them, identify them, and let go of them because I know they're going to come back again. And I know when they're helpful or they're going to lead me somewhere, I have the right to choose to do something with them. So then what I do is I visualize, and usually I'm laying in bed, so I'm kind of laying back and I'm holding balloons in one hand and imagining taking one into my hand and going one by one, holding a balloon, acknowledging what the thought is. Usually I try to say it out loud. Sometimes I don't if my husband's next to me reading or, you know, doing something else, but he still gets to see me doing this regularly. And I acknowledge what it is and I go, I'm scared about my doctor's appointment. Right now there's nothing I can do about that. I can acknowledge that I'm scared and I'm going to let it go. Okay. I'm worried I said the wrong thing to a client or I said the wrong thing to a friend or somebody is upset with me. Okay. It means I care about other people. It means that that's the case. I've also had a lot of interactions with people where that hasn't been the case. And right now I can't do anything about this. So I'm going to let that go. Let it go. Right? And so I'm, I'm working through, and this is again a process that takes quite a bit of practice. You're not going to be wonderful at it right away. You're acknowledging what the thought is. And if all you can do in that moment is just say, I'm scared about my doctor's appointment and release. I'm worried that I'm a bad friend. Release. That is a great place to start. And then that second part where then now I'm starting to talk through those pieces is that even greater detachment. It's me going, oh, maybe, maybe there's a, a more neutral or balanced way to think about it. Or maybe this means something about my values or something that I care about, but it's gotten a little bit more extreme and there might be a different way I can approach it. Or thirdly, maybe that is something that's important to me and it's something that's really helpful for me to remember. And right now is not the time I need to hold that. Right now I can trust that I can let it go because again, guess what? Anxiety is going to bring those back for me again tomorrow. So by doing this and practicing this over and over again, and I know it sounds silly, the first time that I started doing this, I was like, this is so stupid. It's very woo-woo-y. It feels like it's not going to work. As you do that, it is going to feel that way. And that's part of the reverb effect that anxiety causes in our brain or that stress causes in our brain. When we become habituated to think, feel, and act a certain way, when we start to try to shift the way we engage with those thoughts, our brain is going to have that resistance because this is what we've known. And change is hard. And so as you're going through this, just be patient with yourself. Maybe all you're doing today is acknowledging that you have some anxious thoughts or thoughts that might have a little bit more power over you than you want them to. And then maybe a few weeks from now, you're ready to say, well, who brings me those thoughts? And you start to create your own visualization. So you have to go at the pace that works for you. And again, my technique might not apply for you. You can Google tons of other cognitive diffusion techniques. The goal, again, is to just start to see that our thoughts do not have to dictate and define everything about how we think, how we feel, and how we behave. They don't have to be the underpinning for the story that we live in. Sometimes our thoughts are just thoughts, and sometimes they're more or less helpful than they intend to be. Sometimes we get stuck on ones that don't serve us, and it's okay to let them go. 
as you go through this process, I would love to hear about the characters that you create, how you find ways to externalize your source of your anxiety or your stressful thoughts or the thoughts that you're getting stuck on. Or if you find yourself feeling like you need a little bit of support or encouragement, reach out for that too. Anything that I can do to support you, comment below, email me, whatever you want to do to make sure that you're getting what you need because all of us have the right to start shifting our narrative and a story to one that feels more like we're in control of it and we have the right to dictate that a thought can just be a thought. Have an awesome rest of your day and I'm excited to talk to you and to see all of your balloons get out into the world rather than being held and keeping you weighed down.